Artemis is a powerful, noble, and esteemed Greek goddess. She is the child of Zeus and also the twin sister of the god of the sun, Apollo. This goddess has achieved many great things in her life even as a child when her mother, the titan Leto, gave birth to her on the isle of Delos. After Artemis was born, she assisted her mother with the birth of her brother Apollo. This led Artemis being associated with childbirth. She defeated the dragon Python and also the giants Tityus and Gratian. She is a virginity goddess who never took a lover or had any children of her own. She is bound by her love for nature, the wild, and the hunt. With all these esteemed traits, achievements, and her relationship to the pantheon of the gods of the Greek realm, Artemis should play a big role in the story of God of War, right? Unfortunately, no, she doesn't. Artemis is one of the most mysterious and sadly one of the most forgotten gods in the God of War series because of her lack of involvement in the series itself, only showing up and being mentioned a handful of times. The first instance and the only instance of Artemis showing up in any God of War game heads back to the original God of War released in 2005. When Kratos first heads to the Temple of Pandora, located on the back of Kronos, one of the tunnels leads to a gift from a god, and this gift is from Artemis, which Artemis gives the gift of her blade, called the Blade of Artemis, which she states it helped take down a titan. Kratos then can use the Blade of Artemis at his will during the duration of the game, but sadly, like said before, this is the only time she shows up directly in a game. But this isn't the only time she ever shows up somewhere else related to God of War. In the comic The Wager of the Gods by DC Comics, Artemis does show up to take place in a wager with the rest of the gods to see which of the gods' champions can retrieve Asclepius' Ambrosia, an elixir that has incredible healing abilities. Artemis chose her champion to be the queen of the Corrosions, Pothia. Pothia's tribe was cursed with stillborn children to make sure that she would take on the challenge. Unfortunately for Pothia, she crossed paths with Kratos, to which Kratos ended her life, as he did many of the other champions as well. But Artemis did not seek revenge on Kratos for ending her chances of winning the wager. In fact, she was the only god that did not seek revenge on him, showing a sort of humility and honor that the other gods did not possess. There are only two other mentions of Artemis in the God of War games as of right now. The first mention occurs in the game God of War Betrayal, but it is a very small reminder that Artemis is a part of the series at all. This comes in the form of her blade, once again, which can be wielded by Kratos during the game. The last mention of Artemis in the God of War series comes in a more recent installment of the series in God of War 2018, in the form of a light runic attack called the Wrath of Artemis. This attack can be tamed during the main storyline of the game by defeating the troll Dothi Munir in the realm between realms when bringing back the Jotunheim Tower to the Lake of Nine. No one knows what happened to Artemis besides the people over at Sony Santa Monica Studios, and for all of us fans, we can only theorize where Artemis is, but this really only leaves unanswered questions. Where is Artemis? Why was she not there when Kratos destroyed the Greek realm? Why do we get a runic attack in the Norse saga of the game, specifically mentioning her? And will she ever return to the series? Maybe in the next installment? Or will she slowly slip away from our minds as time goes on? I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for making it this far. It really is appreciated. If you'd like to support me further, please feel free to like the video, subscribe for more God of War content, and share this video with a friend so they can enjoy it as well. And everyone, good night, take care, and happy gaming.